Hi everyone, it is Rebecca. I'm over here at the Flower Room in Dover, New Hampshire, and I thought you might like to see how I make a dozen roses. So when you try to do this at home, it can seem a little bit intimidating, but I've got a little pattern that might help to make this a little easier for you. So it's not a pattern that I came up with, but here's the game plan for how to do a dozen roses. So when you're looking at this, that middle one is gonna be kind of your top highest rose. And then you've got four kind of making a quadrant around it, two kind of coming off the sides a little bit lower, again, four at that diagonal, again, a little bit lower, and then one in the front. So it is basically a three quarter round arrangement. If you look at it from the back, you're not gonna get quite as nice a presentation, but hopefully you're mostly looking at it from the front. So here we go. Let me get started. It's always best to count your dozen before you start designing so that when you get a phone call part way through you don't have to start counting how many roses you put in there however many you had on your counter is however many go in that base just a little piece of floristly advice for you so I'm starting with just a little bit of greenery this is cocculus I'm going to use a few pieces of this to start making a little bit of a web and crisscrossing those stems in the water so that when I start putting the roses in, they have a little bit of a support system so they don't bust all flop around. So I'm trying my best to kind of get those stems to cross over each other and keep most of the leaves out of the water. I also have a little bit of this fancy fern, which is a little bit different than leather leaf. I like it a little bit better. It is fleecy. It's a little finer, it's not quite so chunky, and that is really good for kind of filling in and giving you some more structure. The other thing is it's not nearly as dirty as leather leaf, so you don't end up with all that brown fuzzy stuff in your water immediately. This one I'm actually gonna use in two pieces because it's so big. I do kind of run my hands down the stem before I put it in there, just to get off any brown fuzzies that are there, but it's still a lot cleaner than your traditional leather leaf. All right, now that we have a nice base of foliage and you can kind of see that the stems are making little crisscrosses in there. I do have one leaf in the base. We're just gonna live with that for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of find a rose that is going to be on the taller side and has a fairly straight stem. Because if I'm starting with a rose that has a really bent stem with an angle at it, it's going to want to go to one side or the other. And I really want that first rose, that top rose, to be pretty smack dab in the middle. And this is also going to set the height for the entire arrangement. Now, it's difficult to start with the first rows for a lot of people. So if you wanted to start with your four and then put your first rows in, definitely do that. Don't feel like you are not doing it right. So I do have that middle one in. It may move around a little as I design, but we're gonna get back to that pattern before we, dis before we end. So the next four that go in are just basically at the shoulders of that first rose. We want it to just be a little bit shorter. And I've been doing this for a long time, so I can kind of gauge how tall that's gonna be in the vase. It's gonna take a while. Remember when you're cutting flowers that you can cut more off the stem, but if you cut too much off, it's really hard to put that stem back on. You gotta start over and you won't be very happy. So I'm gonna get those four in there. There. So we've got that. You can see, it's making a quadrant there. And then I'm gonna get the two kind of side ones and they're gonna go on either side that we do not think is gonna be the front. Right now I'm gonna to try to make the front face you and again, it's just a little lower than the four making that quadrant up there. All right, so 
now we have half of them in. You can see that those two on the sides are just slightly lower. And I'm actually going to have to go get a couple more roses because, well, I forgot what I was doing and didn't bring them all over here. So you'll have to forgive me. The next four are going to go below your corner ones up here, just a little bit lower. You can see they're starting to come out this way a little bit. I'll turn it for you so you can see on the other side. I'll cut that just a little tiny bit longer. I want it to have a nice umbrella effect when it's all done. was hanging out just a little. I'm just going to adjust it so that it's up a little higher. It just had a really, really dramatic angle to its stem. Okay, so you can see we're almost done here. We have our top one, our four here, two on the sides, our four quadrants, and then the last one goes smack dab in front. So yeah, now that I have that all done, I'll do small adjustments just to make sure everything looks perfect. Like that top rose is it's just taller than everything else. It wants to swing around. I'm going to put just a little extra greenery right next to his stem so that he does not wobble around. And then I'm going to get a little baby's breath and just finish this off for you. I'm going to cut my baby's breath into pieces and just kind of place it generally in and between and around the roses. That piece isn't good. Don't ever send flowers out that are not good. It's not good for you, it's not good for your customers. Yeah, and usually about two stems of baby's breath is good. Stems are gonna vary, so if you need three, that's fine. If you really only need one and a half, because you've got huge stems, great. You don't want it to be so clouded up with baby's breath that you can't see the roses because they are really the main show here. You just want to make sure that you are accenting them. So here's our dozen. It is finished. It looks polished. The roses are fairly evenly spread. There are no big gaps. and I love it. So it's got that beautiful kind of umbrella effect. It's not all straight up and down. And just as a design hint, I'm using the angle of the side of this vase when I'm putting those flowers in to let them spread out. So rather than them touching all the way down at the bottom, a lot of them end in this area so that you can actually get that flower to come outward. Gives you a bigger presentation a little bit more value in the way that it looks. And there you go, dozen roses. Okay, just one more spin so that you can see how well those roses really stay in place because if you move it and the roses all move out of place, it's not gonna look like this when your delivery driver drops it off. So just be careful. Make sure that you've got enough greenery in there and that you've done a good job of placing those roses so that they are not leaving. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, Kay. Thanks. Bye.